Hey everyone, I wanted to take some time to dig into a topic similar to one of my earlier videos. I'm referring to my video discussing the video game backlog and how to approach them. While that's a very first world problem to have, it's one that many gamers and likewise myself are familiar with. Huge thanks not only for my buddy Runjin Run for suggesting that topic, but also the community overall for the views and especially the many suggestions, comments, and support. We got some great feedback there. I say that and today's topic are similar because both discuss the general behaviors regarding pl the playing of video games. I'll pose the titular topic again. Do you need to beat, finish, and or complete video games when you play them? This question is predicated on the fact that a game can technically be beaten, finished, or completed. Being an older video gamer, one who grew up in the 80s and 90s, a lot of my own personal experiences started out with the NES and SNES. This resulted in my brothers and I knowing very clearly if we beat a game because we got the credits to roll. But what about Tetris on the NES or Game Boy or the Super Nintendo version of SimCity? Puzzle games and simulations, even back then, didn't technically have end credit scenes, so we ended up instituting our own thoughts as to what counted as beating the game. To that end, one could say an individual's own goal for beating, finishing, or completing a game could depend on the title or even their own personal preference. Based on this, I think the best bet now would be to define each of these parameters because beating, finishing, and completing a video game could be very different to each individual. I'm going to keep to my own old school definitions and state very clearly that beating a game is playing through a standard game from beginning to end, reaching a final conclusion for the protagonists, and seeing the end credits. What about games that allow you to view the credits from the title screen? Sorry, that doesn't count, as just simply viewing the credits doesn't really result in playing through the game itself as I just described. Let me skip finishing a game and instead discuss what completing a game is. To me, I look at this in a literal completionist sense and believe that this means completing 100% everything in a game. For a game like the original Super Mario Bros., I'd say this is playing through the entirety of the game without using warp zones, then going through the game again in its harder iteration. For more modern games, this would result in getting all the trophies and or achievements in a game. As you can hopefully see, you can beat a game but not fully complete it. But in nearly every game, you cannot complete a game and not beat it. All Kleenex are tissues, but not all tissues are Kleenex. Another good example of completing a game would be Simbu's and my brag of successfully completing Rock Band 2 up to and including getting one of the hardest trophies in the game, which is playing the 6 hour 30 minutes endless setless without pausing on at least medium difficulty. I feel that defining what finishing a game is, is a bit more subjective, and maybe finishing a, is a better term for simulation and puzzle games like SimCity and Tetris. And getting out of the dinosaur era of the 80s and 90s, finishing would perhaps be a better term for today's live service games and MMORPGs. I personally considered my time with Tetris on the NES finished when I managed to get a score over 500,000 points in A-type and successfully clearing level 9-5 in B-type, as well as finishing 19-5 in B-type. Thank you rolling technique for the latter. I spent six months on the MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn and managed to both beat and finish it. How did I do this? I finished the story for the main campaign, causing the credits to roll, per my rule I mentioned, because I played the game through to the credits, it technically counts as beating it, but as anyone who has played this fantastic game knows, it in no way was finished. I then completed the the game in its entirety of the first expansion that was available, Heaven's Word, thus finishing all of the main content available. Did I complete it? Oh, hell no. I only mastered my own character's class and finished a couple hundred of the side quests in the game. And while the game was still technically 
beaten, one could argue that it's no longer finished in today's iteration for me, because even though I stopped playing back in 2016, additional expansion packs continue to release for the game, and many of them are awesome. Final Fantasy XIV is a bit of a cleaner example, since it offers a pretty clear start to finish, even with additional content being consistently added. Other live service games like Forknife and Pokemon Go technically have no way of being beaten, so claiming these games are finished really can only be done with the individual player themselves be stating they're done with the game. Usually players of these types of, of games move on to the next shiny thing unless they've established themselves within their own local community of other players and thus stick around. M and most importantly, players of these types of games aren't looking for a defined end and thus really aren't worried about hitting a point of completion f that marks their experience. Now, I sort of took us out of the beating, completing camp there with my discussion of games that can't technically be beaten or feasibly completed, like live service games and MMORPGs. Getting back to the topic on hand, I want to discuss the overall psychology of why beating or completing video games is important. Do note that single player experiences in video games are still a very big presence. Roughly half of the biggest sellers in 2022 were single player experiences that have a clear beginning and end. Yeah, there's D DLC that may murk up the, the beating and completing thing, but the point still stands that these experiences are still huge sellers that are played quite often. And there are a number of factors that drive the desire to beat or complete video games. The first one is simply for the challenge of it. By challenging oneself to beat or complete a game, there's an immense sense of satisfaction being able to say that it's been done. Being able to look back and say, I've beaten Dark Fact, aka the Living DVD logo from Ease One, is one of my more recent and proud achievements. Or, if you're a Dark Souls fan, being able to say you've beaten Ornstein and Samo is a huge achievement. This is a major reason why Dark Souls and Souls-like games have such a big following. Playing and actually succeeding results in major endorphin rushes. A second factor would be a more community-based aspect. Picture it. It's 1998 and it's been two weeks since The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time has been released. You're hanging out with your friends with and at lunch in high school. One of your buddies asks what you did last night. You attempt to coolly tell them that you've managed to defeat Ganondorf, save Zelda, and finally beat the hottest game currently on campus. The entire cafeteria silences themselves in shock and awe. Then everyone exclaims surprise and exuberation, celebrating your accomplishment for being the first person known to beat this game. Okay, this is, this is a bit overblown, but you get my drift. Beating or completing a game can help raise a person higher in the dichotomous, multifaceted community of those that enjoy video games. By being one of the first individuals, or hell, just, just being able to claim that you, you've beaten it allows yourself into an exclusive club, as it were. I've seen reports being as low as 10% for a game to be beaten, on average of 35% for PS4 games, and up to roughly 60% specifically for the title of Last of Us 2. Generally, the tougher the game, the more props a p person deserves. My old school humble brags were being able to defeat and beat Battletoads from start to finish, as well as beating Contra on the NES without the Konami code and without continuing. Touching on the community aspect, by beating or completing a game, it also allows further entry into subsets of the video game community. This can allow for fans of a game or series to discuss aspects of a story without worrying about spoilers and or gain further help when it comes time to taking out st those super bosses that appear since beating a game. And simply, maybe by beating a game, it allows players to identify with their favorite gamers or streamers that they follow, watch, or admire. 
My third factor for wanting to beat or complete a game sort of gets into some of the negative aspects of the whole thing. And this specifically relates to the sunk cost fallacy. I mentioned this before in my backlog discussion as it applied to having spent money for a game, thus feeling like time was required to be invested to play it. Now, imagine you've been playing Days Gone for the PS4 for 20 hours. You realize by hour 10 that the game just hasn't been gelling with you, but since you've invested so many hours in, you feel like you have to see it through. Not only is the sunk cost the money you spent on on Days Gone, but now the time that you spent on this is yet another type of sunk cost. Sometimes this correlates with the next and fourth factor. And this is a sort of feeling like you owe it to, to someone to beat or finish the game. Whether that is someone is yourself, the game, its creators, doesn't matter, but the feeling is very real. Did mom or dad buy you a game that you just didn't like, but you felt like you owed it to, to them to play and beat it out of guilt? Or how about being a big fan of the series, the, uh, of the game that it's part of, making you try and push beating and completing the game? Maybe it's a game you were able to push through and beat, but you feel you have to complete it in its entirety for any of the reasons I've just mentioned. All of this would apply. And for me personally, I have a number of ex examples for this all. One would be Luigi's Mansion 3 for the Nintendo Switch. The game itself is one of the best looking and running games on the console. And Luigi is probably my, my favorite Nintendo character. Unfortunately, about 10 hours in, I found myself being bored with the overall gameplay loop and just even trying to beat the game was, was a slog. Another great example of this was Final Fantasy XIII. Not only was I able to beat the game, but I also 100% completed it. And God, was it a grind. While Final Fantasy is my favorite all-time series, I stated before in a few videos here that XIII is my most disliked entry in the entire series. But because I love the series so much, I ended up torturing myself for hours to make sure that the game was fully completed. Now that we know the what and the why of beating and completing games, let's get back to the main question. Do you need to beat, finish, or complete video games? My answer to this would, would be to say no, but honestly that's kind of taken the easy way out. Many people feel attached to the many different factors that result in the necessity or even compulsion to beat or complete video games. And this is all discounting all the personal factors such as individual psychoses, environmental situations, or even social pressures such as gatekeeping. But if you find yourself playing a game and finding it a chore to beat or complete, Keep the following in mind to assess your overall playthrough. As mentioned in my backlog video, apply the page 75 rule to the video game. For a book that I may not be fully into, if by page 75 I'm still not interested in continuing the book, I allow myself to set the book down and move on to something else. I did this with Metroid Prime 1 back when it first came out in 2002. While it didn't hook me then, two years later I decided to pick it back up and then I got fully hooked into it and finished it. I also have to compliment my lovely wife personally for this, as she does a really great job of putting down books or video games that don't capture her full attention, all without feeling guilty and knowing she could pick it up later if she so chooses. Another option is to spin the sunk cost fallacy on its head. Yes, you may have invested 20 hours on Days Gone, but you could save yourself another 20 hours by putting the game down now and applying that time on another game that you'll enjoy more. Just because you've already spent time and money on a game doesn't mean you're on the hook to finish it. And honestly, if you have a friend or a relative guilt tripping you to continue playing a game that you feel you don't enjoy, no amount of Guilt tripping or gaslighting is worth the trouble. For me personally, I let myself off the hook regarding Luigi's Mansion 3. Yes, I love Luigi, and I know the game is good and loved by many, but if I'm not enjoying it, that's okay. I can set it aside and hold on to it 
and try it later. Regarding beating especially difficult or, or fully completing games, you may want to assess the overall value of the experience. Are you trying to beat a game on a difficulty setting that you're having an especially hard time on? It's okay to turn down, to turn down the difficulty if that's an option. Are there no difficulty settings or it's just too difficult? It is absolutely okay to put it down and say, this game simply is not for me or it's not worth the pain and hassle are there too many side quests in a game and you just feel too so compelled to finish and complete them all if missing these side quests won't impact the overall quality of the ending story or your own personal experience again it's an easy pass on these is it getting too difficult to try and get the true ending for a game it is okay to just view what that ending looks like on YouTube or Twitch. I have two personal examples for this with the games Cave Story and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I played Cave Story three times through, trying to get the Bloodstained Sanctuary and thus the true ending, but missed it on every single time due to one little detail or another. For Sonic, I managed to only get 172 out of the 180 total emblems to unlock the 3D Green Hill Zone I kept trying to get. I decided to just watch both on YouTube knowing I'll probably keep missing something on Cave Story and I just couldn't stop pulling my hair out on the, the Chow Gardens in Sonic. If you put a high value on achievements or trophy totals and are spending an inordinate amount of time trying to get these, you may want to try and find something else to value, or maybe even learn to value the trophies and achievements that you already currently have. My personal experience, while many individuals in the Final Fantasy community have managed to get the Platinum Trophy for Final Fantasy VII Remake, I have been cool with not getting this for myself weighing the time and pain investment of getting this versus playing more games has led me to be okay with not fully completing a version of one of my all-time favorite games while also celebrating others for their fantastic achievement. Ultimately, it goes back to the Marie Kondo way of thinking. Just trying to beat a game, getting all the... or hitting whatever bar that is considered finishing a game, does all of that spark joy? Or does the boredom, tedium, and pain outweigh the fun? If it doesn't, you have your answer, and it may be time to put the game you're playing to the side and move on to another. It is definitely better to not let others, as well as yourself, guilt you into beating, finishing, or completing a video game. Don't forget that video games are meant to be fun and are not meant to be chores to complete. Real life can often be full of difficult choices and tough times, so we should strive to keep our hobby, the video games we play, fun. When in your lives have you had to let a game go and just not beat it? Or stop your quest to get a platinum trophy or, or something like that? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm really curious on this. And this video really focused on the question of the perceived necessity of beating or completing a game. But what about when you have the want and desire to beat a game, but you just can't do it? I'll probably tackle that as a subject on a future video. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you liked what you saw, make sure to like or dislike, and subscribe for future content, and ring that bell for notifications. Thanks again, and have a fantastic day.